After checking out plenty of BC Mini PCs recently, we're back to the ultra budget segment. This time it's the Firebat AK2 Plus, also better known as the Camrui AK2 Plus. This one has been a popular seller in the budget segment, even though I haven't reviewed it. So my question going into this review was again, why are you buying this? And we're going to look at it in great detail right after this short message. Is Windows lack of storage options driving you nuts? Then you need EaseUS Partition Master, a powerful tool to create, resize, merge, split, move, hide, delete, and format partitions as you like. It can also convert file systems and do much more. Try it for free with a link in the video description. So Geek Buying sent me the Firebat AK2 Plus out of the blue. The only difference between it and the Camrui is the startup screen. This AK2 Plus is a very plasticky box that flexes and creaks all around and definitely feels as budget as it looks. Inside is Intel's most common ultra budget CPU, the Intel N100. Four cores, four threads with UHD graphics. It comes in at $195 US for the 16GB RAM, 512GB storage model on Geek Buying. And there's a discount for new users, or if there's another coupon available, it'll be in the video description. The AK2 Plus comes with a VESA mount, power supply, screws, and HDMI. On the front is an LED for power status. The left side has a power button, along with a couple of USB 3 ports and a USB 2. Inside it is a budget Realtek 8821CE for wireless LAN and Bluetooth. The back has a USB 2, dual HDMI 2.0, Realtek Gigabit LAN, and an audio jack. So no USB-C and a maximum of two displays on this mini. To open the AK2 Plus, flip the latch on the side and pop open the lid. Here you can add a 2.5 inch SATA drive for extra storage. Three screws and we've got access to the DDR4 memory, which is just 2666 MHz. Oh, and just a reminder, older lake and CPUs only support single channel memory. To get to the OS drive is more annoying. This plastic contraption needs to be removed and is held down by four screws. Then another three screws and lift the board. Lots of empty space in here. We've seen this cooler before on budget Camry products. Not a fan. <coughs> The M.2 SSD SATA, but NVMe Gen 3 X2 speed is supported. Windows 11 Pro is included, and a malware test came up clean. Ubuntu worked fine if you want to use Linux instead. Alright then, let's see how it holds up against the competition. The single core Cinebench result was one of the lowest for an actively cooled N100 mini PC. So I upped the power limit, and it managed to pass the 900 mark. But it's still not up there with the best results. Multi-core performance out of the box was dismal, the lowest actively cooled N100 score by far, and hanging with the fanless mini PCs. So what's your excuse? After increasing the power limit, it was more respectable, but again plenty of other minis do much better. The out of box experience shows the lowest N100 single core score so far, but surprisingly upping the power limit gave the AK2 Plus the win. Another poor out of the box experience in Geekbench Multicore. Upping the power limit gave a large boost, but still the slowest in this roundup. Okay, well, one last CPU test is H.264 video encoding. Again, it's by far the worst performer, only beating the fanless mini PCs. The increased power limit brings back a better result of 546, putting it around the middle. Now for integrated graphics. Since this mini only came with a 2666 MHz DDR4 stick, it gets beaten by the other minis using 3200. In DX11, it has the lowest Intel N100 score. It's also the weakest in DX12 Time Spy and DX12 Steel Nomad. So, not great CPU or GPU performance all around. You may be wondering, what can you do with an Intel N100 apart from HomeLab or PFSense? Well, the best performers make good office PCs, and they can even play some esports titles. Here's Valorant at default and power limit increased, so you can see the huge difference. Buried. I like to try something new in every review, so here's Hades 2. It's playable, but a real challenge with this frame rate, and not recommended. 
Minecraft and Roblox for the kids works fine too. Fortnite, definitely not. PS2, GameCube and Wii emulation at 720p works well. Another cool feature of N100 minis is the hardware video decoding on chip. Most H.264 and AV1 media files play fine at 4K 60fps. You can even use an Intel N100 mini for basic 1080p video editing. What about audio? Well, here's latency mon with Cinebench running in the background. It passes the test no problem and should be fine for editing audio. In the BIOS you can up the power limit by going to power and performance, CPU power management control, view configure turbo options and change the PL1 and PL2 limits from 10,000 to 30,000 and that'll max it out and increases the CPU temp substantially. Don't forget to save and exit. In the boot tab you'll find a few extra options that might be of interest. This is the first budget mini to be tested in 3 d Mark's lengthy storage benchmark. Not enough data yet to mean anything useful, so let's use the Crystal Disk Mark result which shows an M.2 drive with decent SATA speeds. As we saw when opening it, the AK2 Plus does not have cooling for the M.2 drive. It should be ok with M.2 SATA, but if you're planning to switch it with an NVMe drive, you'll likely need a heatsink. Bluetooth range is the best recorded so far in the budget segment. This test is done using an audio speaker and looking for the maximum distance with no interruptions or artifacts during music playback. The AK2 Plus also passed the wireless range test. I played a full session of Valorant without a single network connection issue notification at 12 meters or 39 feet using the 5G band. An idle power draw of 10 watts is slightly above average. Maximum power draw by default is the lowest at 21 watts. With the power limit pushed, it hits 32, which is about right. CPU temp held up fine out of the box, but not so well when the power limit was increased. Many others do better with better performance and less fan noise. Budget minis in general are not very noisy, but this one is noisier than most, especially considering its thermal, CPU and GPU performance. It's not great. While the AK2 Plus is still clearly a mini PC, I'm not sure why it has to be so large, especially after everything we've seen regarding its performance. At just under 1 litre volume, this is the biggest budget mini PC so far and has a lot of wasted space. Alright, let's look at the pros and cons. Camaroo's AK2 Plus turns on and functions. It can also compute things. That's always a plus. Wireless range is good. The 2.5 inch SATA slot for extra storage is not something you see much anymore. So that's a nice bonus. The performance is dismal out of the box, and even upping the power limit at best makes it average in CPU metrics, while still the lowest in GPU. For its size, it runs too hot and it's too noisy. Port selection is weak. The best thing about the Camrui AK2 Plus is... So that's the Camry AK2 Plus, a budget mini PC with Intel's N100. If you're looking for a really good mini PC with a lot more performance, check out my review of the AU Star Gem 12, also available at Geek Buying, right here. Cheers!